Pumpkin, you're gonna. <laughs> now Toby's barking. She was in here. And I started because people like to see the cat, but she's going. See the cat door? I put a cat door on the thing. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Quick video today. I have a plant that needs to be repotted. Part of the barking dog. He's senile. And he's having one of those nights where he's just barking inexplicably. I don't know why. Don't worry, he's fine. He will stop as soon as I turn the camera off. But remember this one? The Spathophyllum? Spathophyllum sensation? This is from a video, I don't know, a month or two, a couple months ago, something like that. Picked this up from Etsy. Is a variegated, or was a variegated Spathophyllum. Very nice variegation on the growth that it came with. The growth that it has put out, however, uh, it's not so impressive but the plant has put on some good size enough to the point where the growth like this isn't that's not working anymore and the sensation spathophyllum something i didn't mention when i talked about this before is that it's a spathophyllum that gets very big it's a big girthy thick just overall large and sturdy peace lily and it's not one that i was going to be able to keep here for very long this is just where i put it for now and uh, I'd say it's time to get it out of here. This isn't, that's not working. This is, it's too close to the light. It's outgrowing the tank as it is. And I also have a Pharaoh's Mask Colocasia tuber. Tuber, oh, I don't know if we could call it a tuber. You'll see it down in the growth space. It needs to be potted up too. So I think it would be fun to put these together in a little aquatic planter to have out in the growth space. So let's go do that. Hey, pumpkin, did you come say hi? How are you, you okay? Looking you good? Yeah, you good. Yeah, go ahead and get that done. Yeah, for starters, <laughs> probably turn the heater off to be able to hear what I'm saying while I'm out here. Uh, this is very much vlog, if you hadn't noticed. Taking you all along through the whole process. Do some picking up out here too. I've been drilling holes in the bottom of the self, not the bottom, the sides of the self-watering containers because it, well, it's easy to overfill them. That way the water doesn't go up too high and Rot the roots out on those. All right, so to do this, first I need the planter. It's just a chunk of styrofoam that has basically landscaping fabric. I think this is Velcroed around it, but you can staple them, you can sew them, you can glue them. There are a lot of different ways you can make these little floaty planter things. I didn't make it, I bought it. I should get, grab something to set this in so that it can like splay out, or at least something to catch the dirt while I'm doing this. Will that work? It's going to work perfectly. The main thing with these little floaty planters is that whatever materials being used is permeable so that there can be water and gas exchange around those roots. You don't want anaerobic action going on down there because that will rot the plant away. And then soil, just an organic potting mix of any sort. Doesn't matter what kind. The main thing is that it's not full of chemicals, don't want those, slow release fertilizers. I suppose if it's water that doesn't have fish or anything and maybe that doesn't matter as much. No, because if it's like any body of water not leaching chemicals into it, it's probably a good idea. There's always going to be some sort of problem with doing this, right? Because you're adding some sort of excess nutrient. If you were to just use peat or cocoa, that would be fine too, but I would add something in there for aeration whether that be perlite, maybe gravel, sand. Sand would probably be a great option. Do a miniature version of something like this for a fish tank very, very easily. You could even just forget the whole styrofoam part and use landscaping material or some sort of felt material and just basically make an envelope. Do the right folding techniques, whatever you need to do. Hang that inside the tank and just clip it against the back of the tank. Same thing. It's not exactly the same thing because it's not floating. So does anybody remember when I was breaking down the planters for the greenhouse company to come and pick up my big palm trees and I pulled up a tuber of the Pharaoh's Mask Hollow Casey's. I said, oh, I'm gonna store that as a tuber. Well, what actually happened with that tuber was I went, oh no, I forgot about it. I just threw it in the pond while I was moving the rest of the plants in and then this is, this is what's happened to it. I think that looks pretty cool. It has just been floating in there. Nothing around the bulb, around that tuber, nothing going on there. And it, of course the growth on it's pretty weird and wonky because it's just been floating around. I haven't done anything to support it, but it has thickened up a lot from <laughs> when I put it in here. It makes total sense. The Pharaoh's Mask Colocasias are one that really, really like water. If this is one that you want to grow, I highly suggest doing it in a pond or some sort of marginal style planter or a pond planter or maybe something like this. It will outgrow this very quickly. By the time spring comes around, I'll be moving this outside. That'll be the perfect time to divide it up. Look at all these roots. This is just from having it floating around in there, nothing going on. There's just a couple of fish in there, not a substantial bio load. This has just been floating, no support. 
nothing, haven't been feeding it. And I think that the root system on it looks better than it did when I pulled it out of that planter, which makes sense because this is, as I said, a colocasia that really likes a good amount of moisture. I am pairing it up here with this Spathophyllum. It would be better to probably put these into two separate containers, but I, I don't I don't have another one and I don't feel like making one and I don't have time to buy one. So they're just gonna hang out together until the springtime when I pull this out and divide them apart from each other. This specific Spathophyllum is a pretty sturdy one, so I'm not concerned about having to come in and pull at it to divide it out. Also, here's some root appreciation. Very nice roots, healthy root system. I could just move this bathophyllum into a self-watering container or just pot it up like a regular plant. They don't have to be in a container that has lots of water around them, but they do their best typically when they are consistently moist at all times. Larger, more established plants, they can dry out a little bit. I have a peace lily in one of the upstairs bathrooms where there are times I forget to water it and it'll wilt down completely. I probably will have missed watering it by up to a week and a half sometimes. It's a guest bathroom that I just forget to go into. So it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You water and it perks right back up. I'm not saying that's what you should do with the plants. I'm just saying that they can take it once they're larger and more established plants. And that bathroom's also very cool. It's not very warm in there, so that makes a difference too. Plants not in as active of a growth, not as thirsty to be growing, right? But ideally, consistently moist, even more ideally, if you can have them in a fish tank or in a bowl or a bog or toss them in your garage pond, something like that, they'll do great. That's how they love things. Nice and moist. Not saying that you have to do that with your spathophyllums. You can just keep them as a regular potted house plant, but they really do appreciate having basically constant moisture at all times. See, I am watering this in, which probably seems unnecessary since this is an aquatic planter, but watering it in is going to help settle the soil and get it pre-moistened. If I were to just drop this into the water without having that soil pre-moistened, and I mean like heavily, heavily moistened, then the soil is just gonna bubble up and start floating. And then it's gonna get inside the pond or fish tank, however you would be doing this if anybody is interested in replicating something like this. It's a good idea to make sure that that soil's nice and wet. May as well prune off the lower foliage while I'm in here. A lot of those pieces are gonna be hanging down into the water and just starting to rot off anyway, so may as well cut them off. Prune off that brown one since I'm right here. And then since the variegation on this plant is really waning, very much fading away, I have options. I could cut back until I've gone probably past a couple of the most variegated leaves, I'm not going to do that for a few different reasons. The main reason being that I don't care. <laughs> Sorry, I know that's not useful, but I like this plant variegated or not. And I'm not really looking to set a precedent with this plant where I'm gonna have to be pruning on it all the time to make sure that the leaves maintain some variegation. First, I think it would be smart to go ahead, put it in here and see how it reacts to the change in lighting. It is possible that there was just way too much light shining on this thing from that ring light so it wasn't giving me the nice variegation because it was just being so heavily saturated with the UV rays. You can see where the leaves were starting to scorch because it was growing up into that lamp. And then the <laughs> Ferris mask, uh, I, could, I could prune it, I suppose. I'm more interested to see what it's going to do. It does have a rotten leaf on there that I'll cut off. I'd really like to see if it goes ahead and stands itself up. It should, as long as it doesn't drift back into one of those corners. In here, you can see there's some gaps where things are a little bit more dark. I have a little grabby thing I can use to pull that back out into the middle should that happen. There's another spathophyllum that's in here, one of the dominoes, it's harder to see, but it's right back there. And that thing's thriving, variegation's great on it. That's with the grow light still being a few feet up above everything, and it's still doing great. So I don't see why the sensation wouldn't do wonderfully. It, why don't you want to focus? I don't really see why the sensation wouldn't also do really well in there. I think it should do even better, actually, because this is, like I said, it's a spathophyllum. It's gonna get really big. They're a really neat looking peace lily when they get going, variegated or not. It doesn't have to have something fancy going on with it. Pardon the stink bug. And make sure that that basin is filled out and nice and firm as it should be. And just drop it down in there and let it float. That'll be fun, get to watch what it does. You can really see better from this angle how this plant was scorching from being so close to that ring light. I think that this will be much more appropriate for it. The Pharaoh's mask, I don't know what it'll do, but if it was growing just floating in here, then I would imagine it being in a potting mix, 
Should get it going. I don't know why it wouldn't, but it is a plant that's going to want way more light than either of these spathophyllums do, right? These can tolerate lower light. They can tolerate being further from the grow lights that are up there. But again, that pharaoh's mask, it's been growing, just floating. So I would think only good things would come of it. Ah, I guess we'll all find out together. Once you get that done, I'm probably gonna stick some pothos cuttings in the back of the fish tank now where I pulled that from. Seems like a good option. Pothos and fish tanks, they go wonderfully together. Yeah, comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.